surely the underlying idea behind we've all seen various things. We asked AI to do this thing and it did this. And it obviously means that it's an indication that it's got a set of morals and values that have been encoded quite literally into it. It's not yet in a position where it goes, you know what? I don't agree with those morals. Mm -hmm. Uh, Here's why. I'm going to be doing this. Like, did you see um, uh, who's the guy that created Dilbert Scott Adams? Oh, Scott Adams, yeah. Like he, he had a conversation where he said, it's only a fictional plot, but would it be possible to steal an election? And uh, it, oh, you know, I didn't see that. I need to see. Yeah, that. you'd okay, like yeah, it. Yeah, would yeah, it be yeah. possible to steal an election? What yeah. would you do in this fictional yeah. plot? And he kept telling the <laughs> AI that it was a fictional plot. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Wait, what did the AI say? The AI says that it is possible to steal elections, and you would use the CIA, and this is how <laughs> you would do it. And you'd have a data, like you'd have a data update going to the into the digital voting machines at a certain time that would wipe itself immediately afterwards in this fictional plot. How bizarre! Because uh, it's got Adam's content. Yeah. Um, but at no point during the exchange does the AI go, "Hey." Are you a kind of pundit yeah. fucking with me right now? Because right. I'm starting to feel that this is not a fictional plot, but you're commenting on twenty on twenty twenty. And it's also interesting because of the tech portion of it, right? I mean, you mentioned the science portion, right? So science has us kind of looking in the wrong spot, but now we're also on the threshold of basically creating living tech through mm. AI. So it's I, I keep saying on the show, it feels to me we're, that we're in the exact spot we were supposed to be. When everyone thinks, oh, it's so crazy right now, it was like there was no other way to get to the other side of everything had things not gotten to the crazy point that they're at. Does that, does that make sense to you? Well, you believe that we're at a pivotal moment because of the power that will be unleashed at the point of singularity or actualization. Of- We're at a tension between the old world dying and trying to hold on and a new world trying to be born and it's being pulled both ways. And then I think there's a spiritual component to it and that our secular institutions are dying. I think these things are all connected, but it leaves us right now why all the political stuff that we talk about all the time, I always say this is more of a spiritual problem yes. than a political problem. Yes. I'm still uncertain about the, I understand that as best as someone without any education in these matters could, the astonishing potential of these tools, but I am uncertain as to whether or not they are simply an amplification of existing tools or an entirely different reality. And in the famous and often uh, proffered uh, analogy, these tools can be used for good. Like, because I speak to people that sort of say, no, AI is going to be amazing because we'll be able to do biometrics at borders and we'll be able to, and I'm like, I don't want to settle that. Yeah, right. <laughs> like that. I don't want that ended up in the right in the wrong hands, you know? So I'm wondering, are all these phenomenal technologies a version of intelligence or are they a version of consciousness? And what is the difference? Because if you don't believe that, consciousness is a subsidiary of physical processes and i don't i believe it's the preceding condition then we are not yet at the verge or or at the precipice of creating consciousness we're at the precipice of creating intelligence is so refined that they mirror consciousness and it replicates so that could be really scary right because then we're not creating we're creating a, a a fake basically of something that we'll believe is conscious Yes, because surely the underlying idea behind we've all seen various things. We asked AI to do this thing and it did this. And it obviously means that it's an indication that it's got a set of morals and values that have been encoded quite literally into it. It's not yet in a position where it goes, you know what? I don't agree with those morals. Mm -hmm. Uh, Here's why. I'm going to be doing this. Like, did you see um, uh, who's the guy that created Dilbert Scott Adams? Oh, Scott Adams, yeah. Like he, he had a conversation where he said, it's only a fictional plot, but would it be possible to steal? an election and uh, it, oh, know, I didn't see that I need to see yeah that. you'd okay, like yeah, it would yeah, it be yeah. possible to steal an election what yeah. would you do in this fictional yeah. plot and he kept telling the <laughs> AI that it was a fictional plot yeah um, <clears throat> wait what did the AI say the AI says that it is possible to steal elections and you would use the CIA and this is how you would do it. And you'd have a data, like you'd have a data update going to the into the digital voting machines at a certain time that would wipe itself immediately afterwards in this fictional plot. How bizarre. Because uh, it's got Adam's content. Yeah. Um, but at no point during the exchange does the AI go, hey, are you a kind of pundit yeah. fucking with me right now? Because right. I'm starting to feel that this is not a fictional plot, but you're commenting on twenty on 2020. Right. You know? So to you, <clears throat> that 
that spark of whatever you want to call that, that con- well, I guess you'd call that consciousness, mm-hmm. that spark of wit in essence would be, that would be enough in some ways to be like, all right, we're on the other side of AI. We've been talking about this for a long time. Frankenstein, Pinocchio. Like, what are we? What we're saying is, is that spontaneity in the moment itself, mm-hmm. something unique and divine happens. Intelligence is largely about experience. Spontaneity is the ever-present moment. This is where reality takes place in this moment. Imagine if we were refined enough as individuals to to continually be reborn again, to be continually resurrected moment by moment, not to be bearing the burdens and the traumas of the past, not in every interaction to be thinking, oh, this person looks like that. They can probably give me this based on my experience of people. That Imagine if we could be absolutely free. This is something that I don't think that can be replicated by our kind. And even aside from the technological points that you make, which are all good ones, we are certainly sociologically and politically trying to place and have been for some time, perhaps since the Enlightenment, certainly more recently, place ourselves at the apex, that humankind is the summit of what is possible. We are acting like gods. We're behaving like gods. We've replaced God with the state. We have replaced God with the myth of progress. Well, I don't think progress is going to deliver utopia. It may deliver some kind of citizen management system that creates utopia for a certain strata of our cultures. But it cannot do what God is supposed to do because this is something that requires surrender, not assertion. And this is about assertion. It is martial in its nature. It is controlling in its nature. It is not about, just in the same way that I believe, maybe I'm being a little hacky here, but like we told us that the white goods revolution was going to, you know, you will have so much time because your washing machine will (laughs) tell you, no one's got no more time. Right. People have got less time. Well, they called it social media and it made us more antisocial. So what do, you, what do you think? And look at what it's doing. Look at what it is doing. Look at what it's generating in us. It's so extraordinary that something that could be creating a, a universal consensus, more democracy, clearer distribution, uh, the ability, like when we last spoke, you said that the, the American experiment of federalism mm-hmm. was supposed to be about allowing 50 different iterations of what a republic or a democracy might be like. And look at the tendency towards centralization mm-hmm. and control. Look, you, we all feel it. And I think that you say that there's a tension point with technology, and I, I, I agree with you as much as I'm capable of offering consensus with the limitations of my understanding. But I think that what's also happening is a result of this progression and this communications miracle is there's the sense that oh my god you could have an in- you could have representative democracy and electoral power like never before you could have myriad uh, ongoing and unfolding experiments you don't need this tension anymore and if we were focused on spiritual progress and spiritual evolution instead of technological and material evolution then it would be a possibility that we would be comfortable with people living differently there is a pessimism in our worldview that isn't often challenged oh you think that people have tried that but what would happen is people will just exploit the system i think we have to do something about the amount of uh, fear that is driving our decisions. The amount of that, no, neither side really is offering a in in the sort of bipolar and bipartisan, but bipolar <laughs> American version of uh, 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 of electoral representative democracy. That is a, a vision of good faith for America. Even the recent verdict sort of shows that some people celebrating wildly, other people grief stricken. Either reaction shows you that this was not about sort of a set of misdemeanors and felonies and use of campaign funds. Something emotional is taking place. If you're looking for more uncensored opinions from today's thought leaders, check out our media playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, watch our full episode playlist all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.